Hi again folks. Uh, this is a video that I've been wanting to make for a very, very long time. Uh, but it's also a video that I've been putting off for a very long time. It will be one of the most dangerous uh, devices I have ever worked with. Uh, it'll be the highest levels of radiation I have ever worked with. Uh, so I'm going to take this very, very slowly. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to make it as safe as is humanly possible. I'm just going to do a disclaimer now that uh, I am using as many um, items of PPE that I can find. I'm wearing a mask. I'm wearing um, safety glasses. I'm going to be wearing rubber gloves. I'm going to be behind a sheet of glass. And I also have this glass jar here to store the source in. Uh, today we are going to look at the DP2. Now, the DP DP2 is one of those sort of fabled meters that, uh, if I can get the thing open, I have it in this ammo tin to uh, keep the source reasonably secure. Yeah, as I said, the DP2 is one of those fabled devices that uh, has a check source inside it of just biblical proportions. Uh, now. The DP63A was sort of the, uh, you know, that was the one to get uh, for its two check sources. We've got a Strontium-90 check source underneath and we have the radium dial. Now, this is one that I have removed the radium dial from, so it is completely safe. Um, so if I just show you here, there is very, very little, if any, residual radiation from this. So we've still got the Strontium 90 check source down there. That is so that this unit can go to zero on the 1.5 scale. So you can see there, so the Strontium 90 source and that actually allows this to go to zero on the 1.5. So it does work. There's a battery inside it. Um, if I press both buttons at the same time, if I'm able to do that, there you go. So it passes its self-test. So that's fine. So today we're going to be using the Radia Scan. We're going to be using the Radia Code. And we're also going to be using the Rotem RAM Genie. So for the first part of it, all I'm going to do is show you the exterior of the unit itself. So the DP2 is, I'm going to intersperse this as well with sort of close up shots, just so you can have a look at it a little bit more closely. But um, it's a very, very simple unit. Uh, as you can see, we'll have a self-test there, and then it goes from 220 to the 200 scale, all in Ronkin. Um, the device, as you can see here, from 1965. Uh, there is a Strontium-90 check source inside this that defies belief. Why this unit required such a strong check source um, just wait till you see the size of it as well. It is absolutely huge. Um, the unit, I think, works. Um, I have it wired up anyway. Um, I'll show you the inside of it here. I can't remember if I have a battery inside this or not. Uh, no, I don't have a battery in the actual working part of it. I try to stay away from this. I, I don't really touch this unit very often. Um, I'll just show you the outside of it here. I'm going to take off the, uh, the cover here. I'll just show you the outside of it. As you can see... My hands are actually shaking using this. I honestly, this is the scariest device I have ever used. Um, so just gonna go on the outside right here. As you can see, there is no residual alpha, beta, or gamma radiation on the outside of it here. So that's okay. Now I have the, managed to get the light working inside it. The light goes in here and there's a little push button switch here that you press and uh, that switches on the light. And that just uses a standard 1.5 volt battery. So, what I will do now is I will put on some gloves. I will get the cover off. Uh, I'll unscrew the check source. And then once I have the sort of the check source unscrewed, I will bring the, gr the glass up onto the table. And then I'll get the check source out and I'll get it into this glass pot here. Uh, and then we can continue then. I can do the experiments with the meters after that. So we're gonna do this very, very slowly. Um, I have it sort of loosened up a little bit uh, just to see. I, I had this, I think from around about September last year, 
and I had been planning to make a video but it was sort of just getting the bits that I wanted to make sure it was safe and um, I got the glass literally only two days ago so that's the sort of the final piece of the puzzle right okay um, I think it is fairly loose let me just check yes it is okay so I get these screws done and then once I get the top off I'll get it separated Okay, so yeah, I'll actually, I'll check the inside of the box. Okay, radiation level has not risen, which is good. Okay, and again, I'm going to intersperse this with some close ups. Um, this is where the check source is. Undo these two screws, and it's a little black piece that's in there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take off these two screws, I'm just going to take off these two and then lift that unit out as it is. So, Let's check the inside of this box. That is a good sign that the strontium 90 is not leaking. And let's just go over this very, very slowly, methodically. It'll probably bounce up now. Okay, we're up to seven. Hand still shaking. We're up to seven. It says seven microsieverts then, just around this area here. But all the other bits were fine. I'll actually, I'll get out the Rotem RAM, Jamie. Because it's, it's a lot quicker than the radius scan. Okay. up to about 60 counts per second on that area and we're very very lucky with this unit there is very if any little contamination on the outside areas which is excellent and we'll get the camera in for a couple of close-ups just to let you see around the unit and uh, where the check source is and things like that But yeah, all in all, the unit is looking pretty good and we're okay. Right, okay, next bit. I'm going to undo the screws here and here. And I'm gonna take the check source out and it's gonna go into this pot here. So I'll take the lid off that. So once I've got this done and the check source is in there, I'm gonna do this all very, very quickly. Uh, I'll get the camera down in nice and close and we'll do some experiments with the source. So do a quick jump cut, I'll bring the piece of glass up and uh, I can work on this a little bit more safely. So yeah, very, very quick jump cut. Okay, there is the piece of glass in the way. Let's put my glove, my fresh glove back on. I'm gonna go through a lot of gloves today, I think. Make sure I have more. I do, thankfully. Okay, right, next part. I'm going to lift the source out and I'm going to put it in the little pot there. So I'm going to take these screws out first um, and I'll put them here. Okay, I'm going to use the Ram Genie in these. Okay, those screws are not contaminated. Right, here comes the fun part. Now I want to use these needle nose pliers. Now, hopefully, actually I'll do it this way so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there's the source. Okay, the black dot is where the source is. So let's put it in there. Whew, right, okay. <coughs> Excuse me, right, that was quite scary. I know it doesn't, you know, if you're watching this on video, but uh, this source, I have watched other videos and this source can be very, very strong. So as I said, I'm taking this very, very slowly. You can obviously hear I'm nervous. Uh, right, let's continue. So we'll get the main body of the DP2 out of the way. 
I'll put that down on the floor beside me. Okay. Here's the source. So if I push this up here a wee bit closer actually, and what I'll do is I'll move the glass up here and I'll get a camera sort of set up here uh, looking right at the source and uh, it'll give you a much better look at it. So yeah, another jump cut. Okay, hopefully you've got a good view of that. I'm gonna bring the radio code into shot just about there. Okay, so I am behind glass here at the moment and my, both the radio scan and the Rotem Ram Genie are not detecting any raised levels. So as you can see, when I showed the, uh, the radio scan there, it was at uh, 0.18 uh, microsieverts. You can see the radio code is at 0.82 microsieverts. So that's telling me that this one, this glass is definitely protecting me and two, that the glass in that little pot is stopping the bulk of what's coming out of that. Right, okay, let's go for this next part. So we're gonna use the radio code first of all. So if I take the cover off this. I want to be, you can hopefully see that's, that indentation is where the source is. Okay, so I don't wanna damage it. I wanna be nice and careful with it. So I'm gonna get it around here like this. That's how I'm going to hold it. So I am behind glass at the moment. All right, let me get my hands here. So there is the source. Right there. So. Okay. I think that, that tells us what we need to know there you could see where that jumped up to. Right, let's use, in fact, you know what I'll do? This little stand I have here. I'm gonna put that back in there for a second. I'm gonna use this little stand, just so I've got something to put this on. And these are all scrap needle nose pliers, by the way. Nobody will have to say, oh, your needle nose pliers are contaminated now. Yes, they may well be, but they'll be getting cleaned and then thrown out. So, thanks for the comment, but I already know. Right, radio code or radio scan time. Okay, we've already maxed out the radio code or the radio scan. Uh, that went to 10 millisieverts straight away. So I know I had it sideways there, but it was, uh... there we go. There's the radio scan completely maxed out. Right, let's try the Ram Genie now with the cap on. Okay, and we've overflowed the Rotem Ram Genie. As you saw there, it went over 5,000 microsieverts. That was five millisievert. Okay, so we have maxed out the Rotem Ram Genie. And if I go behind the glass, absolutely nothing. Okay, so we have maxed out the radio scan. We have maxed out the Rotem Ram Genie. This is quite dangerous. We are over 10 millisieverts. And we know we're well over 10 millisieverts because we have just completely and utterly annihilated those both. So let's bring in the DP63A. Now the DP63A is designed to detect 1.5 Ronkin an hour or 50 Ronkin an hour. So let's put it right there and let's try the 1.5. 
Okay, so we know we are over 1.5 Ronkin. Right, let's try it again. I've got the cover off just so that it's completely unrestricted to the beta. Okay, let's try the 15. I'm gonna hold this with both hands, just to make it a little bit easier. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, Right, okay. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure that was six ronk in an hour. Uh, that's 60 millisievert. 60 millisievert. Not six, 60. So yeah, you can see why I've been holding off doing this now. So let's do this again very, very, very quickly. I don't want to have this out any longer than I need to. So hopefully you can see the display one more time. No, we certainly don't want it to be that. Okay, 60. Yep, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that that is 60 millisievert. Uh, that's incredibly scary. Incredibly scary. Uh, I think a source like that is just far too dangerous to be, um, to be anywhere near you for any extended period of time. Um, I'm conscious of the time as I'm recording this. Let me see. Okay. Right, take that out of the way, I put it over here. So you can see there that it's sitting that around about 500 microsieverts. Um, the radio code, uh, you know, it, it doesn't like it at all. And that's combined uh, beta and gamma there out of that. So let's get this put back in a safe box. Okay, there's the source put back into the box. And I put the cover back on. I'll well, get that done. In fact, I don't need the gloves anymore. Get this closed up. My hands are absolutely sweating buckets. I mean, I don't know if you can see the glisten on my hand there, but. I am sweating absolute buckets here. Um, that was absolutely insane. But yes, folks, that is the DP2. A pretty insane meter. And the fact that I got one with its check source intact. Uh, yeah, pretty nuts. Um, I'll be putting this away back in the 50 cal ammo container. Um, and I don't think I'll be looking at it again for a very, very, very long time. Um, if anybody has any suggestions for a video, a further video with this, um, please let me know. Um, I will not make the video straight away. I'll sort of add up all the comments. And if there are certain things that people would like to see, I will, uh, I will do that video all in one go. But yes, folks, that was pretty scary. I'm off now to have a beer and probably six showers. Um, I'll probably have the beer first, followed by about another six beers after the shower. <laughs> but listen, folks, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. And hopefully, I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.